Picture this. You meet that special someone. But they slip through your fingers. You wonder how you're ever going to get their attention. Maybe you ask your friends if anyone knows them. These days, you might send a strategic direct message on social media, maybe using a couple more emojis than usual. Or, if you're Hector Berlioz, you would change musical history by writing a hallucinogenic symphony about your loved one and get it premiered when you know they'll be in town, just to tell them how you feel. Let's rewind. At 27, Berlioz, still a music student, had seen the famous British actress Harriet Smithson in a touring production of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Although he spoke almost no English, he wrote her numerous long letters, confessed his undying love, and even rented an apartment where he could see her come and go from the theater. Understandably enough, given all this, she had no interest in him whatsoever, and never even responded, leaving poor Berlioz's heart in tatters. Now, these were the heady, absinthe-soaked days of the early Romantic capital R movement. Edgar Allan Poe, Opium, and Emotional Extremes were all the rage. To do his crush justice, Berlioz conceived of a massive musical epic, telling a story that he himself devised. In that story, a musician, a thinly veiled portrait of Berlioz himself, meets the perfect woman and can't get her out of his mind. In the fourth movement, he takes opium to drown his despair. And here's where the fantastique part of Symphony Fantastique really starts, because the rest of the piece takes place in his imagination and conjures up his wild visions while under the influence. He dreams that he murders his unfaithful love, is led to the guillotine, and then descends into the afterlife, where solemn church bells announce the start of a grotesque witch's Sabbath the kind of satanic orgy where his beloved herself puts in an appearance. A word about those bells. He wanted the sound of the church bell to ring above the rest of the scene with an otherworldly clarity. Now, these church bells are so fantastically large that practically no orchestra has them in stock. We here at the ASO do thanks to a generous bequest from a longtime ASO percussionist. And we present the piece to you now with the powerful bells that Berlioz had in mind in the last movement, signaling the start of a demonic bacchanal, Hell's Bells. This was all very new territory because until then, symphonies didn't tell stories. Even those that had a title and a subject, like Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, weren't very specific. But Berlioz gives you a very definite set of scenes and events. When his main character gets his head chopped off, you not only hear the blade come down, but you even hear the head bouncing once or twice into the basket. Oh, and Harriet Smithson? Eventually, she heard the piece and learned that it was all about her. Suitably impressed, she finally agreed to give Berlioz a chance. They met, a romance blossomed, and soon the pair were married. It didn't work out though, and 10 years later they separated, after much unhappiness. Luckily, audiences' love affair with Berlioz's madcap romance has been considerably longer lasting. And now, Symphonie Fantastique, or How to Tell Her You Care.